And 23095 is where we've had our traditional ground fault protection of equipment requirements. You know, the requirement that you install ground fault protection of equipment to protect the equipment, it reduces the equipment damage for the most common fault within the power system, which is a ground fault. So that is done when the equipment is installed on site. So what's changed here in the 2017 is the test method. We used to have all sorts of test methods available, available to us, such as push to test, uh, handheld and, and full function test kits that you could buy from manufacturers to provide this testing means. But the code now specifies primary current injection as the only testing method uh, allowed in this section. And that is sort of a big change, mm -hmm. right? Big change. There are a number of factors to consider. Um, one is that this will involve some planning and project expense as well. First, let's go through the basics of primary current injection. A high current injection testing equipment is connected on the line side of your overcurrent protective device at the service, whether that's a circuit breaker or a fusible switch. Uh, current is injected through the main power path or the main current path through the overcurrent device to the load side. And on the load side, jumpers are installed so there is a uh, test conditions for no tripping such as load unbalance and there are test conditions for tripping which would simulate a ground fault and this can be done at multiple levels so if you've got a system that has two or more levels of ground fault protection in the system uh, this can move and progress through uh, all the way down and it's a, it's, a very, it's a very nice test method. It works particularly well where you have multiple sources uh, interconnected, such as with a parallel generator bank and utilities in parallel. All of those type of configurations work well. There's some significant logistics hurdles to work out though. Right, so I mean, yeah, I think there's, I think that's the part of the project management aspect of this, right? I mean, with regard to, maybe not only the, the, the consulting engineer setting up, but also the, the contractor on site, right, setting up when does this get done? Because uh, obviously you don't wanna have to, to, to connect everything up and then remove the connections to do all of this testing, right? So setting that equipment, having the, the logistics of the test done uh, as it's set before we pull the wires and make those connections to the terminals uh, could be a significant time saver uh, with regard to the, the, the project. Yeah, engineers will need to take a look at their testing and performance specifications and uh, devise the best method to address this. It really means that as part of the commissioning effort that, that engineering involvement is essential because to verify the performance of a multiple levels of ground fault, how you're going to test that uh, can vary uh, and, and it just needs some attention. It, it does provide some benefits. It can certainly catch where you have current transformers that are, are have the polarity reversed, right? It can cer certainly catch those type of configurations. Uh, it can certainly address multiple sources where you want to have coordination between sources as well as levels within your system. So there are definitely benefits for this. This is a big change. It requires specialized test equipment, so you're going to need testing agencies. This is not the type of equipment that most electrical contractors will have available to them within their, their company. And, and I would say this will be one that right, the enforcement community picks up on really quick with regard to asking for the information and the documentation. That's so, correct. Uh, yeah, this I isn't think one so. that this isn't probably yeah. one that slides through for a while. I think it's one that uh, you have to be right on top of, right? That's right. I'm glad you mentioned CT polarity. I think that's one of the trouble spots that we see most frequently out in the field. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's, it's interesting, Jim, that you were talking about the commissioning, and, and Chad, you mentioned the fact that you need to do this primary injection before the contractor hooks it up. How do you balance that? You know, if you're in a commissioning mode, you've, you've got all the connections made. You're gonna ask them to unconnect and hook up to primary testing? It's gonna to have to be part of that test plan, and, and you're gonna to wanna to look at, um, you know, what load is available to, to to get the system operational and, and performance verification. And then if you're gonna come back in and do the testing, it means disconnecting stuff. So uh, nobody's gonna like doing that. <laughs> it's one of the largest challenges with this.